So all of these things are really important to know what they needed and why they needed it. So if you think about it, they have all this rich land and so much space, but they didn't really have that many people in the area. They had the Native Americans that they tried to push out. And we mentioned last week that they tried to use the Native Americans as slave labor for their plantations, their big farms. Um, but they started to develop a different idea and they wanted to help other countries to get something back in return. And that developed something called the Triangular Trade Route. And this is the same map that you have in your notes. Uh, you can see the different areas around the world. And although in this map it looks close, we were trying to print it on a piece of paper, so it doesn't look that far. But if you look at my globe right here, uh, this is North America. Uh, right here in particular is the United States on the East Coast. Look how far that journey is to Africa and to Europe. It's a lot further than it looks like on that map. So all of this takes a good bit of time to participate in. But each of these countries had something to offer each other. So we're talking about this rich land that they have in North, well, the North America region. And so they were able to produce things from the ground, things that were raw, things that were fresh. Um, so we call these raw goods, and we mentioned some of those earlier, tobacco, uh, some that we didn't mention were molasses, coffee, sugar, all of these products that they pretty much just take straight out of the ground, and they can push these things to other countries, countries that don't have as much land to produce all of these things, or maybe their land is a little tired from being overworked for so long. And so most of the time, these products would be sent over to Europe. Now, Europe had um, a population, they had a history, they had a lot of technology that was established. They were pretty settled there, um, as opposed to the new world where you know everything's new and they're having to start from scratch and create all these wooden um, lodgings and things like that. So in Europe, they were able to take all of these raw goods that they got from uh, North America and they were able to change it with their technology. They were able to produce new items from it. So they manufactured these goods. They were able to make things like guns, pots, pans, and all sorts of stuff um, from taking these raw materials and processing them so that they can now become something more technologically advanced. So they benefited from North America's raw goods uh, and were able to make them into something new and would send them out again. Um, sometimes this leg of the route would go down to Africa. Sometimes it would go straight to North America. Really, it was a little more complicated, a lot more complicated than just three specific directions. We watched one video earlier this week where it showed that it actually went lots of different ways. Sometimes it would go to some islands, but as a whole, it was in a general triangle shape. So when these things were delivered to Africa, a lot of the people in Africa realized one of the best things that they had as a resource, in their opinion, was their own people. And Africans enslaved other Africans and sent them on their way. Now, some of you might have been surprised by that fact. You might have assumed that Europeans or people from North America came and enslaved the people from Africa and took them over but instead Africans enslaved themselves. Now, I asked my class this um, earlier this week, do you think that means that the people of Africa are to blame for slavery? No, not really. Yes, they did enslave their own people, but why were they doing it? It's because other countries wanted these slaves and were willing to pay them for it. So as long as there were other countries that were excited and willing to take slaves, then they were going to send them out because they were making money from that. Um, and just like we were talking about last week with the Native Americans, because their culture was different, their lifestyle was different, and they looked different, um, they weren't necessarily seen as equals. So it was easier for Europeans and people from North America to accept the idea that slaves um, were not necessarily people, that they were belongings. 
something that they could own like property. Now, we don't think that way now, but back then, they thought that was a logical uh, line of logic. Some people did, not everyone. Um, so it wasn't really necessarily just the Africans' fault that um, slavery happened. It was everybody's fault that this occurred. Um, and like I said, sometimes it's a little more complicated than just um, this simple little triangle. Now this journey from Africa to North America, that's called the Middle Passage. And the Middle Passage was a really devastating journey. It was a really difficult thing to go through. So put yourself in these enslaved African shoes for a second. So you're just living your life, your normal life with your family. You have your home, you have your community. And all of a sudden, you're snatched up, you're kidnapped, and then you're crammed onto a boat, um, a very large boat. I actually have a picture. Now, this might be hard to believe because it's a little far away, you can't see it very well. But in this picture, these are supposed to be bodies, live bodies of people that are just crammed together on this boat. Imagine riding on a boat so close together. So there was a lack of privacy, there was a lack of food and water. They were still fed because if these enslaved Africans died, then they wouldn't get their money's worth. But they were trying to maximize their profit for a minimum amount of spending and taking care of them. So they weren't really taken care of very well. Um, like I said, they didn't have adequate food or water. Um, you really didn't have a lot of exercise. And the people that were taking care of them on the ship really didn't see them as equals. So they were abused. They caught sicknesses. Um, so you had to be really, really strong to survive this part of the journey, this middle passage. Um, because they were also separated from their family. And can you imagine what that feels like to be taken away from everything, including your family? You may have no idea where they are. You may have watched them be injured or killed in this whole process. You may have watched them fall sick or starve or any of these things. Because this journey, guys, it was not just, I would be tired of this in like 10 minutes, but this didn't even last a couple of days. Or a couple of weeks. No guys, they were in wooden ships that were traveling across the sea and these wooden ships did not have engines. So that meant that this journey, depending on the weather and how the waves were going, it could take anywhere from one to six whole months. Six months of being in a situation like that. It's devastating to think of. But before the slaves got there, we had another kind of worker that was in the North American territory, and those were indentured servants. Now, indentured servants, they were usually people who were from Europe, so often they were white, and they were people who were generally poor in their home country, and they kind of wanted a new fresh start. And what seemed like a good fresh start was to move to this new world and to be able to make your own way, to have freedom and try to make your own life successful. So these people would agree and sign a contract to work for another person for anywhere from two to seven years. Um, and you can think of that as a debt. They're paying off a debt. It's like a credit card. So a credit card is a type of money, well, a type of um, currency where if somebody has a credit card it's not their money that's sitting on the credit card it's an amount of money that they're allowed to borrow for a little bit and they're supposed to pay it back so anytime money is spent on a credit card well then that eventually needs to be paid back and these indentured servants they did have some rights um, they were able to read and write usually um, but they were supposed to stay um, with who they signed that contract with unless they were traded to somebody else. Um, and eventually the idea is that they would eventually be free once they finished out their contract. However, a lot of times indentured servants 
weren't able to survive their entire contracts. A lot of times they would die before they even finished. Uh, and here's a picture of an indentured contract where somebody agreed that they wanted to take this, take this, um, I don't want to call it an opportunity, that sounds so positive. They wanted to take this um, chance and work for somebody for two to seven years in order to get to the new world. And slaves, like we were talking about just a few minutes ago, most of you probably already know, well, they often came from Africa, so they were usually people who were black, uh, and they were kidnapped and stolen from their own home, so they had no choice. This was not their decision. They were forced into this, and they were owned like property, not treated like people, um, so they weren't allowed to read and write. They were often abused, hit by their overseers and their owners. Um, there were slave codes that limited their rights to keep them from um, succeeding. So as far as not being able to read and write, that was so that the slaves could be a little more isolated and they couldn't escape and try to um, leave their owner because their owner paid for them. So their owner owned them instead of them having their own life. So oftentimes, Slave owners would separate their families, um, maybe just to keep them uncomfortable sometimes so they don't have uh, communities that they rely on and feel like they can move on. Sometimes it was just money. Hey, we've got this slave. I don't want it anymore. I've got plenty of slaves. You can take it. Uh, but slaves were always slaves until a very long time later, hundreds of years later, we started making some decisions and started making some changes. We'll talk about that later in the year. but. For the most part, know that if you were a slave, then your children would be born slaves and you would be a slave for your whole life until later on we change things. Um, and don't forget, we do have this wonderful Venn diagram in your notebook. And um, there are some things that slaves and indentured servants had in common too. They both worked very hard. They um, both weren't given adequate food and um, clothing and shelter, uh, their owners would usually skimp on that because, well, they wanted to make the most for their money. Um, and if they did try to escape, then they would be hunted down and punished for trying to escape. All right, guys, I can't wait to see you next week. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.